two northeastern constituencies create a friendly rivalry on Arrow Barrel Day. A minister in the Ministry of Economic Affairs defends the BERT program. And coming up in sports, the pitch at Kensington Oval could be the determining factor in the first test against the English. Credible. Balanced. Committed. This is the CBC Evening News. Happy Arrow Barrel Day. I'm Shane Jones, leading the news at 7. The constituencies of St. Joseph and St. John came together this afternoon at the St. Elizabeth Primary School to celebrate Arrow Barrel Day with a joint community event and cricket match. We arrived well before the start of the cricket match, but scores of Barbadians had already begun to gather as the two rural parishes let down the border they share and joined forces to host a wholesome family event. They played dominoes, cards, had free blood pressure checks. There was a lucky dip, toys and a jumping tent for the kiddies and lots to eat and drink. Both the youth and the mature came out and they were some that just liked to pose. Speaking before the cricket match, St. Joseph Member of Parliament Dale Marshall says sport is a great way to combat deviant activity within communities. We recognize that there's a lot of gun violence and deviant conduct with our young people. But these are, these are issues that are not just issues of policing. These are issues which require us to take serious steps towards building our communities, or should I say rebuilding our communities, and I'm happy to be, I don't want to say blazing the trail, but I'm happy to be contributing to that exercise today. The Attorney General says choosing Arrow Barrow Day to have the event proves the government is committed to highlighting all the positive elements of Barbadian society. Arrow Barrow is today revered as a national hero, not just uh, for Barbadians, but for people who look to people like ourselves for inspiration. Um, he was a brilliant leader and a brilliant politician. Uh, while he may not have been my personal mentor, I, I, I think my mentor, was, my hero would have been Grantley Adams. But the point is that he, he sent a signal to the world that Barbados was a place that was willing to take its place on the world stage. And even now, even now as we deal with our international affairs, we draw a lot from the kinds of examples that Arabara said. Apart from road infrastructure, Mr. Marshall says he will be fighting for a bus service that works for the residents of St. Joseph. His neighboring MP, Charles Griffith, revealed two big plans for St. John. Things are happening in St. John. Um, I have a situation where one landowner would have donated some land for a community park, and that is happening sometime early in this quarter. Uh, there's also another landowner that would have donated land for a plain field similar to what we here today. So I would say that the process is slow, but things are happening in St. John. The residents at Bath, Welch, um, they're being sorted as it relates to the Freehold Tenantry Act. So I am, I am pretty pleased about the pace of things that are happening right now. Well, one thing is for certain, community spirit is high in St. Joseph and St. John. The Royal Barbados Police Force has been thrown into a state of mourning following the passing of one of its female officers. Police say that around 20 minutes to 9 last night, officers at the Crab Hill Station viewed the body of 41-year-old PC Donette Cadogan of apartment number 1 Josie Hill St. Lucie. They say she had complained to siblings of tightness to her chest and weakness in her knees. PC Cadogan was on sick leave at the time of her death. The Barbados Economic Recovery and Transformation Program is not a short-term fix. Speaking at a BLP St. Peter branch meeting last evening at Roland Edwards Primary School, Minister in the Ministry of Economic Affairs, Marsha Cattle, told those gathered that the BERT program is substantive in its focus on moving Barbados forward for the next 50 years. It is not an IMF program. It is what this Barbados Labour Party government has spent years prior to coming to service to the people of this country, thinking through and consulting on and working with the social partnership on to, to put in place those policies that are going to make a difference in your lives, in the lives of your children and future generations. 
Ms. Kato says the program was absolutely necessary as it comes on the heels of a decade of no growth and little opportunity in the country. She says there was an erosion of good governance and a loss of public trust. Ms. Kato believes the BERT program will ensure that the last decade is not repeated. The plan aims to restore macroeconomic stability and it aims to make sure that the economy is put on a sustainable and inclusive growth path. And so those first sets of measures in the June budget were phase one. We needed to make sure that we did, we, we, we made certain expenditure measures that would mean that people, once we started the program, that there would be a safety net for those who would need it. Well, Ms. Cattle says the BERT plan is based on a platform of economic enfranchisement and will provide opportunities for Barbadians. Barbadian filmmakers continue to perform well despite not having the requisite resources. Minister of the Creative Economy, Culture and Sports, John King, says a lot has been accomplished with filmmakers producing great content. Mr. King says a vibrant film industry would mean more jobs in several areas. If you look at the credits of any, any, any of the films, there's so many people who find employment on films, building sets, doing lighting, cameras, I mean, just makeup, costume designs, actors. So, I mean, it just goes on and on and on. And so if we can get some sort of a film industry going, and I've been saying to people all the time, even if we start out with our films, and I, and I, and I have to say this, if we start out with our films, going to people who share um, similar backgrounds as we do. These are stories that they're familiar with. Minister King says there remains a number of untold stories highlighting the relationship between Scotland and Barbados as an example. There's some language and there's some words which I wouldn't say on camera, but this, this, this is shared by just Barbadians and Scottish people. This is a story that needs to be told. Um, a lot of majority of, of, of black Barbadians would have come from slave stock. But the Scottish came as the indentured servants. Cohabited, they have offspring, you have names of places and, 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 and even actual names where the names were changed and things were dropped to make them sound more British and that sort of stuff. How who knows these stories? You know, and, and these are things that would draw um, Scotland and Barbados a little closer together. Mr. King's comments came on the sidelines of the Cinema Under the Stars event, part of the ongoing Barbados Independent Film Festival. Now, during the event, Barbadian musician Nicholas Branker, along with U.S. actor Harry Belafonte, was recognized by the Barbados Independent Film Festival. Belafonte was awarded the Living Legend Award and Branker a Lifetime Achievement Award. I am... Um Touched, humbled, very appreciative. It's not often that I get these types of awards and I'm, for that I am really grateful. And my life is about just doing what I do best. And any, anything on top of that is gravy. My life is an award in itself, but I'm really, really appreciative. Thousands of Barbadians who benefited from government's trust loans will receive training this week to help them run their respective businesses. Small Business Minister Dwight Sutherland says one of the biggest threats to entrepreneurs is sustainability. The fund offers prospective small business owners up to $5,000 in the first instance to help take their business from startup to enterprise. More than 1,200 applicants have already signed up for financial aid since the program was launched late last year. The training is being facilitated by the Literacy Bureau. Thereby we can train some of our vendors some of our small businesses, some entrepreneurs, how to sustain their business, how to make it successful. Training in, in areas of financial management, training in the area of customer service, you know, bookkeeping. So these are some of the basic training we will offer. It's, it's, it's not a classroom setting. We will try to make it as comfortable for these persons because we recognize some persons shy away as a result when they hear training because they believe it is a classroom setting where you have to come and sit down and do a test. We don't want to do that. We want to give you the necessary resources whereby you can indeed achieve success. 
Good news, relief is on the way for some commuters who are subjected to torturous waits for public transportation. This as the Transport Authority moves ahead with its route rationalization plan. Chairman Ian Estwick says shakeups will be coming to operators plying over supplied routes such as Silver Sands, Silver Hill, Jackson, Ferry Valley and Bush Hall, which have over 30 minibuses and ZRs. He says some operators will be moved to underserviced routes. The underserviced routes include St. Albans, Martins Bay, Jackson, Yorkshire, but that's not all. So we have to make sure that people living in these areas are able to get to and from home in a reasonable time. We can add a rock dander to that as well as one of the underserviced routes. For the first time in 82 years, a railway resumed operations in Barbados. This time around, it was on the grounds of the St. Nicholas Abbey in Cherry Tree Hill, St. Peter. Scores of visitors and locals turned out to experience the ride. The first day of operations reportedly got off to a smooth start, and train driver Michael Brown says a lot of positive feedback was received from the patrons. There's a lot to see along the way, and the tourists enjoy it, and the Bajans enjoy it as well. Of course, this is the first train to operate in Barbados since 1937. So it, and, and actually we had, um, we had one passenger on board, she's a very special lady. She was the last person to ride the original train in 1937 and she was with us today.